Hi, I'm Colleen Taylor, and welcome to our TechCrunch TV WWDC 2013 wrap-up. And I'm joined here by Greg Kamparik and Daryl Etherington, our esteemed writers who were at the Moscone Center in San Francisco today at WWDC. Thanks we for being there. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look like your minds have been blown, like it's just been a crazy. We're yeah. also a little bit yeah. tired, so there's that. <laughs> right. We had a line up at like 5 in the morning this morning, but yeah. we're good. Right, we had the live blog, everything, yeah. wall-to-wall coverage. But just, we're, we're going to get into the specific things that were announced today, but just in general, can you talk a little bit about the, the vibe of the event today? It's an enthusiastic crowd, right? There's yeah, I mean... You've got to You've assume been that, that, previous that it's, years. it's always pretty enthusiastic yeah, yeah. because you have to assume that the, the folks that go to WWDC are the people, are, I mean, most of the attendees are the people that were able to get tickets before it sold out. And this year it sold out in 71 seconds. Yes. So these people are, uh, they, were, they were excited to be there. So, yeah, no matter what, the energy was going to be pretty nuts. But this year is good. That's oh, yeah. True. Yeah. And, yeah, I guess they're all preaching to the choir in there yeah. when, when you're at the event. But um, it seemed like there was a bit more humor in things this year than maybe there has been yeah. in previous years. Yeah, Apple execs were pretty uh, pretty loose, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, they were cracking on themselves a little bit more than normal, you know, making fun of little mistakes they'd made in the past and, like, mess-ups with maps or with some design choices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe we can get into that in a little bit, the specific jokes, <laughs> to re-hear re them. But... Uh, the first thing that was announced, or one of the biggest things, was OS X, the new yep. operating system called Mavericks. No yep. more yeah. cat names. No. Yeah. It's named after something in California. I don't know. You Californians know about this. <laughs> yeah. I guess you would. It's the surf spot. Yeah. This oh. is a big wave surf spot. <laughs> it's it's amazing. You've got to watch it because every year, we, sh we should get into Apple again, but every year th this is where the, the big waves happen. Oh. It's here just maybe like an hour south. Yeah. That's one of the most famous surf spots in the world. It's a good yeah. spot. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's Mavericks. But did they talk about like changing the name? Is that a big yeah, deal? So yeah. So they've essentially run out of uh, cat names. They kind of joked for a second that they're going to call it Sea Lion <laughs> after you know Lion and Mountain Lion and all that. Uh, but instead, they're going to it's going to be just California spots. So I imagine that there might be a Cupertino down the road or a Palo Alto or a Santa Cruz stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. And so, what are the big things in this? Oh, what aren't the big things in this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one has a lot that I was personally. Pretty excited about. It. Like I, I thought, the Finder changes were amazing. I don't know. I, f I feel like it makes Finder usable. Like yes, that's one of the things that I've always kind of cracked on OS X for is like the Finder window, which is really how you get around the operating system, has always been kind of a mess. It always feels like there's you have so many Finder windows open. It's like you're always collecting them and, and closing them. But now you can drop or you can bring them together and they're tabbed, which is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it, it makes sense. It's odd that they haven't done that before. Like it's something that browsers learned a long time ago, and that's yeah. essentially a file browser. That's exactly what Finder is, right? So why not port that lesson there? So it's it's really good to see it there. Right. So yeah. better search. Yeah. And the overall design seemed quite different, right? Yeah, it's uh, th they made some tweaks to things like uh, calendar. They made a big, big change there. Yeah, I mean that's kind of across universal across their entire design theory now, and that that was some of the jokes that they were making toward themselves is with calendar. Uh, the, when they first launched calendar on OS X, it was this weird, like leathery looking <laughs> thing. It looked like an old office calendar, yeah. and the, the joke they made was uh, no cows were harmed in the yeah. the creation of this calendar or something like that. And also they removed the stitching, but <laughs> yeah. it, it managed to stay there. The window didn't just fall down immediately. Yeah, so. right. They're joking yeah. about that being great, great engineering and stuff like that. So it was, it was just lots of little tiny designer jokes. Yeah. Okay. And so Finder, so no more skew, skew morphic, skew which is a word right, yeah. that has been thrown around so much just in the past two months, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Unless you were a designer, maybe you didn't know that Someone word. Someone just made it up a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. But yeah, so flat, flat design is a thing. Now, what, what else, anything else in Mavericks that's exciting? File tagging. I think that's kind of cool. File tagging, so you, yeah. So you can have, I know it sounds super nerdy. <laughs> no, like, Ooh, file, tagging. Tagging. file tagging. Yeah. Yeah. It's, cool. like, it's just nice because it doesn't matter necessarily where, say you have a bunch of work documents and there are all kinds of different folders. You can just tag a, folder, uh, a file as work and then you have this little section over on the left that's just all your work files. Everything that's been tagged work, no matter where it is in the operating system, it's all pulled into one place, mm -hmm. okay. which is kind of handy. Yeah. All right. And, and they, then, the, the bat, there's battery saving improvements that look like they could be very impressive, but it's one of those yeah. things where you, you got to see it in practice to see what kind of effect it actually has. Right? Okay. Yeah. Right, cool. And then, you know, another big operating system, iOS, their mobile operating system, iOS 7, that's also debuted one. today. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's the, a more dramatic change, I think, at least on the surface, right? 
Yeah, for sure. It really is. I mean, as far as we can tell, largely a, a, a visual change. Like it's it's enough that any, if you've used iOS before, people aren't going to pick it up. And be like, I have no idea how to use this. Right. What, what is this new thing that they just gave me? Yeah. Um, but it's it's pretty dramatic. You would notice in a heartbeat, they've dropped all the, the the gradients and the glares and all that, and instead, as rumored, went with this much more flat design. Mm -hmm. But which still has the this depth because they're using this translucence effect like across the board, right? Yeah, so it seems like anything that used to kind of block things. So, like, say you're watching a video and you would tap the screen and the, the play controls uh, would, would pop up and they would block the video behind it. That's all kind of translucent now, so you can see through it. And the, the keyboard now is translucent. So as you scroll, you can see stuff flying behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. It seems like, in general, the, the takeaway from just the Twitter sphere and the general population was that this was something that people were more excited about than anything, just the new iOS. Yeah, I think it, it, there, you could definitely tell the crowd responded really well to it and uh, you know was blown away any time they would just, some, some minor animation would come, because that's what you can't see. <laughs> if you were just watching the live blog and we have the static images, it's really hard to convey. You know the animations and stuff, but the, it was very impressive. There's a new multitasking view, which is really nice. Yes. So like you can actually see the applications as you're scrolling through. Whereas before you could see these little icons at the bottom, and it's kind of hard to remember what exactly you were doing in that specific app. Mm -hmm. Now it takes takes a little screen grab of what you're doing. Yeah, before. It shows you your last. You date. scroll past that. It's, yeah. it's kind of similar to like WebOS back in the day. Yeah. Before that died a miserable, miserable yeah, death. Poor WebOS. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. But and they also made a good bit of Android jokes, right? I mean, they, they kind of, they named the, the opponent. Yeah. yeah. So uh, iOS 7 supports AirDrop now. So like if, if you have your phone out, I can tap your picture and I'll send you that photo on the spot just wirelessly between it, not over you know picture messaging or anything like that. And they were joking about how on Android you have to tap your devices together and, and, yeah. so, and whatever. But it also has, it has some features that are, you know, were in Android before, like the access to quick settings. Uh, the way they've done it is slightly different. Like you pull up from the bottom and now you have this new Command Center, uh, which has like you can change. I think you can turn toggle Wi-Fi, toggle Bluetooth. Yeah, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb. You can change brightness settings. Yeah, and there's a built-in flashlight, which destroys all these yeah. poor flashlights. Yeah, all these guys there. are raking in money from these flashlights <laughs> are destroyed. Right, and and that let's get into that because in general there were a number of things that Apple debuted today that seemed to replace or or. Well, they copy. always do. They always drop these bombs that seem like they could kill people's businesses, right? But I mean. I, developers that I've spoken to know that's a possibility, and it's not like no one gets blindsided by it, right? Like stuff like photo improvements, that one could have some effect on you know a few startups that I can think of. Uh, the way they've done it now is it uses metadata to like automatically organize your photo collection in the cloud and on across your devices. So there are companies that do that, and they may be affected. But it, it's always a question of you know, sure Apple has built this feature, but if somebody does a better experience, people will go to that other experience, right? Right. Yeah. That's always the case. Yeah, I suppose any time that there's an announcement on stage, people say, oh, this company just died. That company just yeah. died. And yeah. that's not all. That no. I mean. You mean Ping didn't kill Facebook? <laughs> no, it did not. <laughs> and uh, so let's get into, I mean, Pandora. That was one company yeah. that people said they should be worried because today iTunes Radio. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, really what iTunes Radio is. It's the Pandora competitor directly. Yeah, with a bigger library, with yeah. more hooks to your existing music collection, because a lot of people are transitioning from, you know, a completely sort of owned music into the streamed model. So they already have a library, they don't want to leave that behind, and now this one but, knows about that library and can use it, it. But it is this very similar idea of you pick a, a song or an artist or a genre that you like, and it'll find tracks that kind of fit that mood. So you can mm -hmm. be like, I want to listen to summer songs and yeah. <laughs> jam out. Right, and so that seemed like a pretty good. I mean, in terms of taking it, on Pandora, Pandora is hugely, you know, successful and very popular with all ages. Do you yeah. think that this was? What did the demo look like? It looked great. I mean, you know, it was kind of a limited demo, but it looked the songs that came up like, oh yeah, that artist makes That's sense with good, that artist. Good, good and, music. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think it'll work well because, as far as I know, Pandora requires sign-in, and as far as I can tell. Uh, iTunes Radio doesn't because you already signed into iCloud. Right. So Pandora has that hurdle of having to get people on board mm -hmm. and get them to register. So all these people that have maybe have checked out Pandora before and they're like, eh, I don't want to. Also, them. Pandora has like uh, you have a limited number of skips, right? Like, yeah. Mm, and yeah. this one un unlimited. He made a point of like mentioning like you can just skip the song and like and then it's free or it's free and ad supported. And then if you're an iTunes Match subscriber, there are no ad ads at all. So that's the, I think it's like $25 a year. I can't remember exactly what it is. But then you get it 
and you get iTunes Match on top of that. So that's that's pretty strong, convincing argument on the yeah. money side as well. Yeah, I guess Apple makes its money in a lot of other ways. They don't necessarily need to yeah. uh, prevent the skips. But so MacBook Air, new. So th there were a couple new hardware. You know, this is obviously a developer conference. This is for software, but there there were some hardware. Yeah. News. Yeah, they for the last couple of years haven't launched like brand new hardware markets. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of just quietly update other segments of their uh, whatever other hardware they have available. And today it was the, the MacBook Air. Yeah. Uh, it, the big improvements are in the Haswell chip, which is the new Intel chip, it's yeah. faster and better battery, and just big improvements to the battery overall. Like uh, I think the 11 inch went from maybe seven hours, five hours to nine hours. Yeah. And the 13 inch went from seven hours to 12 hours. 12 supposed to be a full uh, half so day. That's full, great. Yeah. I have an error and the battery is so bad. That's the one thing I don't like yeah. about it. Yeah, I think Because it, it says five hours, but it's really, if I'm running different apps and things, it can really, it doesn't get me on a flight from here to New York. I mean, talk about the high class problems or something, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so this should be better, I guess. It should be better. And I, I've already seen a lot of people on, on Twitter saying like, well, done with my old one, I'm ordering this like right away. So, because I, I think that was, like they specifically spoke to a problem that people had and people were like, great computer, everything about it great, battery life. Like that's the one thing I need addressed and that's the one thing they really did address. Right. But in terms of hardware, big news, uh, the Mac Pro. I think it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is. So it's start from the beginning. What, what, what is the Mac Pro? Let's the new Mac Pro. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you wanted. The... Oh no, no, I don't need the. But <laughs> it's this thing. Like how? It's a yeah. It's a yeah. it's a de it's a professional desktop like designed for you know video editors or whomever. But it's it's got the the, the crazy thing about it is how diminutive it is. It's like the it's tiny, tiny little capsule thing. So Apple's always had the Mac Pro series, which has been their, their big desktop series. So they had the iMac and the Mac Pro. And the right. Mac Pro was supposed to be like their, their reigning champ, only for the, the, these engineer guys, not the engineers, but the visual guys and audio guys. Yeah. Um, but that thing was huge. It used to be like a truck, and you needed these two gigantic handles to pick it up and move it. Um, so no one ever really moved it. No, yeah, yeah. If you, if if you moved up an office, you just left it there. Yeah, yeah. That's where it lives now. Um, but this thing is an eighth of the size in volume uh, compared to the old one. So it's you know half the height. and half the, the, the depth as well. It's as tiny as you saw in the picture. Yeah. yeah. Which results in some trade-offs, though. Right? Like, you pointed out, I think. Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how many people really took advantage of the expandability of the MacBook, or the Mac Pro before, mm. but it doesn't seem like the, the new Mac Pro is expandable at all. Like, it used to be that you could add some RAM, maybe add a new video card, and with this one, uh, it's this crazy triangular design that we saw before, and the, the two sides are GPUs, and then one side is the CPU, and then in the middle is some of the internal bits, but you can't really add to that. You can't really add a new GPU. You can't swap those pieces out. Wow, that's a, that's an interesting point because you'd think the Mac Pro, if any device people would want to customize a little bit more, it would be mm -hmm. the Mac Pro. But it has they emphasized external expandability. So yeah. they they put six Thunderbolt two ports in there. Yeah, there is that. Which is like, uh, I think they're banking heavily on the fact that now people are, because the throughput speeds are so much better on those external cables, you can now do a lot of the work that you used to have to do inside, outside of the case. Right. So, yeah. And the shape itself, I suppose, just kind of got people's attention. It, uh, a lot of people are saying it looks like R2-D2. So, it looks like a Bluetooth speaker or something. Like You would yeah. not think it was a computer. It's, it's uh, unusual, very unusual. One cute little touch, though. That I liked is that if you so you can turn it by turning it up the top, and if it detects that you're turning it, it lights up the ports on the back because it's assuming that you're trying to plug something in. So it like illuminates everything on the back for you. Uh -huh. It's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. And any news on when it's going to come out? Did I don't remember. I don't know if they mentioned that. I think it's yeah. later this year. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they mentioned price either. No, yeah. they didn't mention price. No, Seven no numbers. Billion dollars. No specifics yeah. there. But it was a rare sure. move for them to, do, to to preview something like that, and you know, with a lot of variables still left up in the air. Well, there was a lot of pressure, I suppose, just recently with a lot of buzz about Apple isn't innovating anymore. We haven't seen anything cool out of that company, which seems to be a recurring thing that people say every few years, but maybe that's why they had to tease this a bit. Yeah, well, they did. They mentioned that specifically, right? Yeah. Was that where you made the comment about Yeah. Can't innovate my ass, yeah. <laughs> I think was the comment. Yeah. Was, that, was that Phil Schiller? Phil Schiller, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Well, anyway, and also some big news, at least in the tech industry in general, is that they're really doubling down, coming back to the U.S. for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mac Pro's designed and built in the U.S., which is nice. Yeah. Very excellent. I, that's, I, I'm, I think that's a, another reason why the price is such an interesting, you know, question mark there. So 
we'll see what that costs. Because I mean, traditionally, that's been why you don't. It's for cost reasons, right? Right. And how is that announcement sort of fielded in the crowd? I mean, we've known for a while, Apple has said for months now that they're focusing more on U.S. manufacturing. And then a couple months ago, it was revealed that they're, they're putting a big uh, facility in Texas. But this announcement that this cool device is going to be mm-hmm. really made here in the U.S., or at least assembled, so a lot of it made in the U.S. It was pretty well received. I mean, I think it's important for Apple because, like, even between that last time when they mentioned that they're moving some uh, development back to, or I'm sorry, manufacturing back to the U.S., they had that uh, the, the tax scandal, I guess you'd call it, where it seems like they're they're keeping a lot of money offshore in a crazy circular setup so as to, to not pay taxes stateside. Um, so this allows them to, to seem a little bit more patriotic. Right. You know, like, hey, look, we're, we're building this thing. It's one of our high-end products. We're building it here in the States. So, yeah. Yay. But for a lot oh. of people in the audience, it, I think it seemed more like a like a confirmation moment. Because everybody knew that they were doing a Mac in, in the US, and everybody knew that the Pro was sort of due for uh, a refresh, and people put, and it's it's, uh, it's low volume, right? Like right. that computer is gonna be for a very specific audience. And it's when you're doing low volume construction, like it's easier to do it in the States. So I think I think that people kind of said like, oh yeah, that's, that's, what, we were, that's what we were looking for. We knew that was coming. <laughs> but a couple of things that some people are disappointed, no news about a watch. <laughs> right. Yeah. No news about these kind of things. I mean, what do you? No Apple Television right. still. Yeah. It's it's WWDC. It's their developer conference. They never show new stuff like that. Yeah. Like not these. Gigantic if they were going to make a new them. watch, they would have a dedicated event for a watch because it's a crazy, ridiculous product that deserves its own. You yeah. Know, showcase. Be- because otherwise, they would anything else that they showed off that day would get overshadowed by the yeah. watch. Or if the watch wasn't impressive enough, like it would get completely overshadowed. So it's good to just you know launch it on its own, debut it on, on its own, so they can kind of gauge mm-hmm. people's actual interest in it. OK. Yeah. Cool. Any, any more takeaways here? I don't think so. No. <laughs> You've got to go back over to the Moscone Center, right? I mean, it continues to be a day of meetings and Apple, Apple, Apple. No, it's all Apple. Yeah. Never stops. Mm-hmm. Never today. stops. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for joining us, Greg and Daryl, and thank you for watching uh, WWDC Wrap-Up.